Hello again, brethren, sisters. I'm going to be answering another question. This is kind of a question that I have already kind of answered. But um, uh, which one does the warring against the flesh? Is it the soul or the spirit? Um, this is another question asked to me of a beloved brother. And incidentally, unto that beloved brother, um, my wife and I, Susan, we are praying for you. Um, I'm sorry that you are out of work again, dear brother. Um, and also on to another brother who texted me. Uh, hello, brother. Um, your state on to another brother has gone into lockdown. We're praying for you, brother. And uh, Woodstock here is now today, this Friday, in phase three lockdowns. <clears throat> like museums, movies, theaters, and I think it was libraries are to be closed. And retail stores are to operate at 25% capacity now. And grocery stores are to uh, operate at 50% capacity right now. We knew this was coming, brethren. We we knew this was coming. We knew this was coming. And also, as Brother JT had texted me a while ago, that it is very possible that Trump might set himself up as sovereign. And in the light of this extreme emergency that the media is keeping alive, you know, the uh, poison crown, the corona going to get you virus. Uh, they're the ones who are keeping it alive, all right? But um, just wanted to acknowledge those things. I've been very busy here at home uh, doing things. And um, but let, for those of you who have texted me or emailed me, please remember um, we, we, we do keep ourselves quite busy. And um, you are not being ignored. I'm not ignoring you at all. Um, the time, <laughs> time is not always on uh, our side over here, but um, <clears throat> we'll get to your questions and responses one way or another. You have my word. Understand? Okay. <clears throat> Turn in your, uh, get your authorized version of the scriptures to King James scriptures the true and real scriptures, and turn to Deuteronomy chapter 12. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Like I said, I have covered this before, but in light of the question that I was asked, I'm going to go through this, and I'm going to put several links in this video. Um, yes, the videos are long, but um, do, do watch them. Please, do watch them, if you have time. And on to the one sister who mentioned uh, between taking care of the baby and doing this, that, and the other thing. Um, remember, brethren, these videos are done with the premise of giving auditory instruction rather than visual things, okay? These videos are done with the intent that if you're at home uh, keeping the house, if you're in the garage doing work, if you've downloaded this video or a video, put in your earbuds, listen to it, okay? These videos are made with the intent to be heard, not visual stimulation, okay? Always. That has always been the premise of um, the videos that are done. Uh, they're meant to be heard, okay? And look at this ugly mug. <laughs> and there's a, a creepy smile. <laughs> uh, they're meant to be heard, not visually uh, stimulated or anything like that, okay? But <clears throat> go to Deuteronomy chapter 12. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 12. Oh, we will read verses 1 under verse 16. 
Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 16. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Follow me along. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 16. These are the statutes and judgments which ye shall observe to do in the land which the Lord God of thy fathers giveth thee to possess it all the days that ye live upon the earth. Now, doctrinally, dispensationally, this was under the law. And under the dispensation of the law, it was a faith and works set up. Okay? I addressed that in that one video of faith alone, debunking the faith alone from Genesis under Revelation. Why? Okay? Address that quite in depth in that video. Okay? But this is doctrinally and dispensationally written onto the Jewish people. Okay, when they were going to inherit the land. But let's continue now, okay? This is instruction in righteousness. <clears throat> if you do not rightly divide the scriptures, you're going to have all kinds of troubles. You have to rightly divide this book. Okay? Continuing from verse 2. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which shall which ye shall possess, serve their gods, upon the high mountains, upon the high, upon the hills, and under every green tree. Ooh, like a green Christmas tree, perhaps. Mmm. Mmm. Let's continue. <laughs> and ye shall overthrow their altars, and break their pillars, and burn their groves with fire, and ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods, and destroy the name of them out of every place. Of out of that place, excuse me. Ye shall not do so unto the Lord your God, but unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose out of all your tribes to put his name there, even unto his habitation shall ye seek, and thither thou thither thou shalt come. Remember the dispensational difference now, okay? Back then under the law, they had a temple, a physical temple. And uh, the Lord does not dwell in temples made by hands. You're saved and born again. You are sealed until the day of redemption. You have God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that spirit dwelling within you, okay? Dispensational difference has to be noted, okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> from verse 5 but unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose out of all your tribes to put his name there even unto his habitation shall ye seek and thither thou shalt come and thither ye shall bring your burnt offerings and your sacrifices and your tithes and heave offerings of your hand and your vows and your free will offerings and the firstlings of your herds and of your flocks and there ye shall eat before the Lord your God, and ye shall rejoice in all that ye put your hand unto, ye and your households, wherein the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. Ye shall not do after all the things that we do here this day, every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. For ye are not as yet come to the rest, and to the inheritance which the Lord your God giveth you. Now very quickly, when you get saved, you are not to do the things of the world. There is going to come a change in your life which the Lord will wrought upon you, will be wrought upon you. The Lord is going to change your life. There's things going to change around here. Okay? The Lord is going to bring changes after your salvation. Okay? And you are not to do the things of the world. You know, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Okay? Not talking about eternity, your salvation, but your sanctification. Which we need a lot of right now today, don't we there, brother, sister, huh? Let's continue. <clears throat> 
Verse 10, But when ye go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God giveth you to inherit, and when he giveth you rest from all your enemies round about, so that ye dwell in safety. You can tie that into a reference onto the millennial kingdom even, because we are not there yet. Okay? We, the church of the living God, get resurrected, caught up. Okay? Then the time of Jacob's trouble. And then we come back down with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and he's going to rule and reign from Jerusalem as King of the Jews, Son of David, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, over all the nations, and he's going to rule with a rod of iron. Okay? Okay? You with me so far? Let's continue. <clears throat> then... There shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. Thither shall ye bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes, and the heave offering of your hand, and all your choice vows which ye bow unto the Lord. Ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God, ye and your sons and your daughters, and your men servants and your maid servants, and the Levite that is within your gates, for as much as he hath no part nor inheritance with you. Now pay attention. Take heed to thyself that thou offer not thy burnt offerings in every place that thou seest, but in the place which the Lord shall choose in one of thy tribes. There thou shalt offer thy burnt offerings, and there thou shalt do all that I command thee. Okay? Referring to a place situated placed by God. Now the tabernacle back here was movable, but that was where they would go, okay? A place. And then when the temple was built, they had an actual structure to where they would go to worship the Lord. But today, the true worshipers of the Lord must worship the Father in spirit and in truth, okay? Because remember, the Lord does not dwell in temples made without hands, but within you, okay? Ye are the temple of the Lord. Okay? Remember that. <clears throat> Very big di dispensational difference going on right here. Okay? But let's continue. Verse 15. Well, let's read verse 14 again. But in the place which the Lord shall choose in one of thy tribes, there thou shalt offer thy burnt offerings, and there thou shalt do all that I command thee. Now watch this. Notwithstanding, thou mayest kill and eat flesh in all thy gates, whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. The unclean and the clean may eat there thereof, as of the roebuck and as, and as of the heart. Only ye shall not eat the blood. He shall pour it upon the earth as water. Sorry there, Catholic. In three dispensations, at least. Drinking blood is not okay. <laughs> okay? But note that in verse 15. Whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. Okay? Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 14. Deuteronomy chapter 14. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 14. Verses 21 on to verse 27. Verses 21 on to verse 27 in Deuteronomy chapter 14. Ye shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself. Thou shalt give it unto the stranger that is in thy gates, that he may eat it. Or thou mayest sell it unto an alien. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed, that the field bringeth forth year by year. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, to place his name there, the tithe of the corn, of the wine, and of thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herds, and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. 
And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, when the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, again the dispensational difference, then shalt thou turn it into money, and bind up the money in thine hand, and shalt go on to the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. Now watch this. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, for oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink. Now note that, the soul lusteth after, for oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink, or for whatsoever thy soul desireth. And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice, thou and thine household. Now note that the what your soul desireth or lusteth after in this context is referencing to things of the flesh. Oxen, okay, what does it say there? Oxen or for sheep, which could be used for sacrifices. We have to grant that, yes. Or for wine or for strong drink, or for whatsoever thy soul desireth, and thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God. Now the oxen and the sheep, yes, can be used for sacrifices. But oxen or sheep, eat, the, and thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God. Okay, you with me? <clears throat> and thou shalt rejoice, thou and thine household. And the Levite that is within thy gates, thou shalt not forsake him, for he hath no part nor inheritance with thee. Okay? Now, the difference here is the dispensational thing. You have to remember, during the dispensation of the law, eternal security was not there. The seal of the Holy Ghost was not there. The Holy Ghost could come and go accordingly. Okay? And the soul was connected. That's why you read in Leviticus that uh, that soul shall be cut off, okay? The soul could be defiled under the Old Testament because, because Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 2, we will be reading we will be reading verses 11 under verse 15. Okay? Now actually, actually, I beg your pardon. Let's read from uh, verses 8 under verse 15. Okay? Verses 8 under verse 15. Beg your pardon for that. Colossians 2, verses 8 under verse 15. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. It's not or, vain deceit, vain deceit. It's and. Philosophy is the wisdom of men. Vain deceit. You trust in the wisdom of men, it's vain, it's deceitful. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. <clears throat> For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, spirit, soul, and body. You and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, and we have a body. Okay? Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Let's continue. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Right here. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh, 
by the circumcision of Christ. You have to remember, under the law, the circumcision, okay? Circumcision was given unto Abraham. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. But that was a sign, a physical sign of the covenant, okay? Which was done in the flesh. Today, the circumcision made without hands is... Verse 11, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Hold your place there. Hold your place there and go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 13 and then we'll go back to Colossians and pick up at verse 12. Okay? Circumcision made without hands. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 13. Therefore is the, there is therefore now, excuse me, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Okay, again, I, I've covered this before. <clears throat> God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. The flesh is sinful. He condemned sin in the flesh. Okay? All right. Now let's let's continue. That now go back really quick to reference. We we use point of reference, verse eleven in Colossians chapter two. And whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. And then when you go back to Romans chapter eight, verse three, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Under the law, okay, the flesh, the body, and the soul were connected, okay? If they ate something, uh, they could defile their soul. If they touched the dead body, their soul could be de uh, defiled. The circumcision was only in the flesh. But see, the circumcision made without hands it divides that, okay? What does it say in uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 11? Again, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. When you are saved, you are sealed unto the day of redemption, okay? God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that Spirit, is within you. The circumcision made without hands, which they did not have in the Old Testament. Okay, look at Romans chapter 8, verse 3 again. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Now let's continue that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the capital S spirit, and the Lord is that spirit. Are you with me? For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. Carnal, flesh. Okay? But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, fleshly mind. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. The circumcision made without hands. Okay? The circumcision made without hands which comes from Jesus Christ. Okay? God our Father dwelling within you. You have God the Father dwelling within you. Okay? You, you get that, right? That the circumcision made without hands. 
And because of that circumcision, soul and body are separate. Have you not looked at the scriptures that we have just looked at, especially in uh, uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 11? Okay? It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing, dear brother. Okay? Let's continue in Romans. Verse 9, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Circumcision made without hands, sealed unto the day of redemption, anybody? Okay, the dispensational difference again? Back then, the Spirit could come and go, come and go, come and go. No eternal security back then. Today, you're saved. You're sealed until the day of redemption. You're going to heaven whether you like it or not. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. But, it, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You see that? Spirit of God, spirit of Christ, spirit, soul, and body, one God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? Okay, let's continue. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit, that's a capital S, the Lord himself, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Now go back to Colossians now. Picking up at verse 12. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of, of God, who hath raised him from the dead. What is that operation of God? In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Now let's continue on to verse 13. <clears throat> and you... Being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them all. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Okay? You, you ought to know this one by heart. At least knowing where to locate it. Okay? Ephesians 6 verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And remember, of course, Colossians chapter, uh, uh, Colossians, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, <clears throat> verses 3 and 4, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God, little g, of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on to them. Okay? But now, right now, go to Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 5. Verses 13 on to verse 18.
Galatians 5, verses 13, on to verse 18. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in, the, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, capital S, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit. Remember how we saw in Deuteronomy how the soul lusteth? But today, if you are saved and born again, you have that circumcision made without hands. So the soul and the body are separate. So you can touch something today with their flesh, like touch something that the law said was unclean. But today, because of the un uh, because of the circumcision made by Christ, you know, you are sealed until the day of redemption. Whatever you do is going to affect your flesh, not your soul. See, you get it. Do you get it? Okay? I hope you do get it. I hope you do get it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be as simple as possible with this. Okay? Let's continue. Again in verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the capital S spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Lord is that spirit, Ye are not under the law. And remember, remember in Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 3, uh, on to verse 4. There is, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, because of the circumcision made without hands. Under the law, body and soul were connected. That's why they weren't allowed to eat certain things, touch certain things, because that circumcision made without hands wasn't there. The circumcision was in the flesh, okay? A seal of the covenant between Abraham, being Abraham's children, right? And I've already, I have addressed this in several other videos, okay? But today, like I said, again, there is that circumcision made without hands. You touch a pig today, it's not going to affect your soul, okay? All right? If you touch a dead body, it's not going to affect your soul because that circumcision is made without hands, Okay? Very important to note that, but let's let's continue. In uh, Romans 8, verses 1 on to verse 4. There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made, hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be filled, might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. See, under the law, your righteousness was according to how you kept the law, abstaining from these things. The fulfillment of the law Today, in our in a sense, is that Jesus Christ has given us that circumcision made without hands, and that separation between body and soul is there. So one will not be defiled by the other. It is a battle of flesh and spirit. Okay? See, you're saved of the church of the living God, born again, again. The Lord Jesus Christ is in you. Ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay? Your soul is seated with Christ 
in heavenly places, okay? Your soul is in skin suit, right? You know, the flesh, okay? So you're seated together in heavenly places, all right? Because you're sealed. You're going to heaven. You know, once we get resurrected, caught up, you know, the church of the living God, okay? We're going to be forever, we're going to ever be with the Lord, and we're going to come back down with Him uh, in His second coming, and we will reign with Him for a thousand years. Okay, all right. That's the difference. Under the dispensation of the law, that was not there, but today it is. So you're saved, born again, sealed on through the day of redemption. Your soul is seated together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. You have his seal upon you. And that circumcision made without hands is the, the dividing of the body and the, uh, the soul. So that's why you can eat pork today in Christ. Okay? That's why you can do those things today. Because it doesn't affect your soul. It is a matter between spirit and flesh. See, But someone who is not saved... <laughs> which is all about the flesh right someone who ain't saved it's it's all flesh you get it you get it so um hopefully my dear brother uh hopefully that uh gives you a little bit more of an answer to your question that you asked me um I'm going to link several videos in this video where where that is addressed. Several. Um, I can't offhand tell you which ones because I can't find them. But um, hopefully this answers your question, brother. Hopefully it does. And um, we are praying for you, brother, uh, especially with the news that you shared with us. And also my brother from Oregon. I'm sorry I have not texted you back. I'm, I'm pleased, brother. I'm not ignoring you. No excuses. Please forgive me. Please forgive me, brother, for that. And for those of you who have also got questions, again, I'm not ignoring you, okay? Okay? Those of you who do ask me questions just to try to trap me, uh, yeah, those are actually quite... You know who you are. You ask me those questions that are clearly try there to uh, try to trip me up. <laughs> Okay, those are very easy to spot. Yes, those questions I ignore because I can see them a mile away. But those of the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God, who have asked serious questions, um, never ignoring you, never ignoring you, never, never. Okay. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Um, Lord willing, might do uh, answer another question here uh, a little bit but I, I want to get this one done uh, for you so I love you brethren sisters church of the living God I hope you're prepared I hope you are prepared and as brother Brian said we got to fight in prayer in prayer you know fast and pray, you know, and like he said, to wage a war in prayer against what is coming. That's going to be it for this one. I love you. Lord willing, we will see you in the next video, okay? I love you. Bye-bye.